Welcome back. Today, we're going to be designing a content distribution network, commonly referred to as a CDN. Some very popular CDNs, we have Google Cloud CDN, CloudFront as part of AWS, and Akame. Now, when building large-scale distributed systems, there is an inherent problem. If we have users spanning continents with a single server serving these users, then they're going to have to make cross-continental requests. So imagine there weren't these edge servers here, right? They were just the users, and the single server is positioned here. These users are all going to have to make requests to this origin server, and this will have to be through multiple internet service providers through internet exchange points to retrieve data. This adds a non-trivial amount of time to latency for each request, impeding on the user experience. And this is even more prominent in data intensive applications like streaming platforms that stream large files such as videos to end users. So this is the overarching problem of distributed systems that a CDN aims to resolve, where the goal is to strategically distribute proxy servers or edge servers across the global network edge. And these proxy servers act as intermediaries and can cache data closer to the end users. So when a user makes a request, rather than going all the way to the origin server, they only have to travel to this intermediary server, so a fraction of the distance, significantly reducing the latency, improving the performance, reliability, and efficiency of content delivery. So how do we design this? So let's briefly discuss our functional and non-functional requirements. So the CDN should retrieve content from the origin server. The CDN must process requests from the end user. It must also efficiently deliver cached content to the end users, as well as efficiently search and locate cached content. And finally, it it should invalidate outdated cache content and remove it. So essentially carry out CRUD operations. And then in regards to the non-functional requirements, well, we're building for a distributed system. So it's going to be a global system. We need to have low latency for end users because again, that's the whole point of a CDN is to provide as low a latency as possible. And it needs to be highly available. So within a CDN, we have multiple users as well as multiple proxy servers and an origin server that has replicas to ensure a level of redundancy. Now, when a user initiates a request, it is directed to the closest proxy server. And there could be many proxy servers within this region. The system then checks for the presence of the cache content that the user requested. And if the content is located within the cache, this is marked as a cache hit and the data is promptly served to the user. In such instances, there is no need to send requests to the origin server to retrieve that information. Conversely, if there is no cache content within this proxy server, well, that's considered a cache miss, prompting the proxy server to forward the request to the origin server for data retrieval. So not only does the proxy server pass the information back to the user, but it also caches it within its local storage for potential future requests, optimizing subsequent interactions. This is called a pool CDN, and it's something we've discussed within the system design primer course here on Alka.js, where the content is fetched from the origin server to the edge server only when a user requests it. So we're essentially pulling the content from the origin server as needed. Now, this type of CDN offers many benefits, so it offers efficient resource utilization. So by fetching and caching content only when there is a specific request from the user, User, this prevents unnecessary preloading of content that might not be used. We also have dynamic content support. Because this is pool CDN, it's well suited for dynamic content as it fetches the latest version from the origin server on demand. And this can be further optimized with what's known as ESI or edge side includes markup language. And what this does is it fragments web pages into static and dynamic components using ESI tags. So when a user requests a page, the CDN edge server retrieves static content directly from the cache and then concurrently fetches the dynamic data or the dynamic fragments from the origin server, assembling them in parallel. It also supports cache invalidation for dynamic content, ensuring a balance between the freshness and efficient caching. And we'll go into this concept later on in the video. There's also scalability. So obviously pool CDNs can easily scale to accommodate increased traffic as the content is basically fetched on user request. And then lastly is lower bandwidth usage. So bandwidth is used more efficiently since content is transferred from the origin server to the edge servers only when there is a specific need from the user based on user requests. So for unpopular content, this will potentially never be pulled, saving bandwidth and storage within the proxy servers. However, just like anything, there are trade-offs to consider. So in regards to cost, there is an issue with latency. So any content that isn't already pulled within the proxy servers is going to result in increased latency as content needs to be fetched from the origin server before being served to the user. Obviously, this is going to impede on the user experience. Then there's the potential overhead on the origin server. So if you think about it, if all users are requesting new information, all these requests are going to be going to the origin server. And this could be significant during high peak times. And then lastly is the freshness of content. So cache content might not always reflect the most up-to-date version, especially if content changes frequently on on the origin server. So in this case, we have to look at how to manage caching validation strategies. So we'll discuss that later on in this lesson. Now, the alternative caching strategy employed by CDNs is regarded as a push CDN. So this operates on the principle of proactively pushing or uploading content from the origin server to multiple edge servers in advance of user requests. It's proactively pushed 
to the Edge server. The Edge server stores all that content within its local cache. And like we said, there'll be multiple proxy servers maybe within this region. So it's ready to be served to the users without the dynamic retrieval from the origin server upon user requests. So when a user makes a request for specific content, the CDN Edge server serves the content directly back to the user from its cache without needing to contact the origin server. This minimizes the latency and accelerates content delivery to the end user. It's very intuitive, straightforward to understand, and there are many benefits to it. So the first is obviously low latency. There's gonna be faster response times for user requests as the content is already available within the Edge servers, minimizing the need for retrieval of data from the origin server. It reduces the load on the origin server. So since all the content is pushed to begin with, there is less reliance on the origin server for handling the user requests and it's optimized for static content. So this type of CDN is optimized for static or less frequently changed content. So where preloading content onto edge servers is feasible and effective. And this leads us on to the costs. The first one, which is very important to consider is resource utilization and especially in regards to long tail data. So the long tail refers to the vast amount of less popular or niche content that collectively makes up a significant portion of data. And with a push model, this will all be stored on the edge servers. So pushing out all of this content to edge servers, regardless of popularity, may result in inefficient resource utilization because we're going to be using bandwidth, storage space, server resources to allocate this content that might not be frequently or ever accessed. And as you can see, the hot content, obviously its level of popularity is much greater than the long tail, but the amount of content is far less. So that's the first issue. The second is we have limited dynamic content support. So like we said, one of the benefits is it's optimized for static content. So with dynamic content where the content is always updating, changes may not be instantly updated to the users. And that's because they need to be pushed in advance, leading us to the final problem where there is a potential for stale data. So if we have dynamic content that's not regularly updated, or if updates are not pushed in a timely manner, users may receive outdated information. So a more optimized approach and what a lot of modern content delivery networks often leverage is a hybrid approach where we utilize both pull CDNs and push CDN. So it combines the elements of both architectures. So this approach definitely capitalizes on the strength of each model, providing flexibility, efficiency, and improved performance, where they push popular or critical content to the edge servers in advance to ensure low latency and optimal performance. And this is especially beneficial for content with predictable popularity patterns. And then the system will pull information that is less frequently accessed, helping to mitigate the impact of long tail data. Furthermore, the pull strategy is particularly suitable for less predictable or dynamic content where caching may not be as effective. But overall, the combination of proactively pushing and on-demand retrieval optimizes the content delivery across the CDN network, balancing performance and resource utilization. So that's what we're going to opt for. So these are the common caching strategies. Now, one of the common problems that you may have noticed within the pool CDN architectures is that when a user requests cache content from its nearest proxy server that doesn't have the requested content, but a neighboring edge server does, rather than going to this edge server, it's still going to make that cross-continental request to the origin server, resulting in suboptimal content delivery and resource utilization. So a naive approach to this problem is searching through all edge servers to check if any of them have the requested content. But this solution falls apart for several reasons. We have round trip latency. So each request is sent to an edge server sequentially. So in a large CDN with numerous edge servers, the process could take a non trivial amount of time negatively impacting the overall user experience because in the worst case scenario you're going to have to search through all the edge servers before realizing that none of them have the content and then go to the origin server it's also intensive in terms of resources like we just mentioned there is the round trip of going to each and every edge server and then this just isn't scalable as the cdn expands with more edge servers this naive solution becomes increasingly unscalable and inefficient so a better alternative would be to use a multi-tier cdn so this is what the architecture looks like where we categorize edge servers into different tiers based on factors such as geographical location, network proximity, or server capabilities, and then strategically managing the content across these tiers. So let's consider in this example where we have two tiers. First is the child tier. So this consists of edge servers that are closer to the end users geographically. These servers are responsible for handling the requests from the end users, caching frequently accessed content, and serving cache content wherever possible. And it serves as the first line of defense for content delivery. Then we have the parent tier. Now this is a higher level tier positioned behind the child tier, and it typically contains fewer servers, as you can see, but is more powerful in terms of computational resources. Now the parent tier is responsible for storing and managing a broader range of content 
including less frequently accessed or large files. So when a user makes a request, like we said, the child tier is the first line of defense and stores frequently accessed content. So they'll be checked first. If there is a cache hit, great, we can send that information straight back to the user. If for example, the user is searching for long tail content, then the request is going to be forwarded to the parent tier. Like we said, this is going to handle less frequently accessed content or larger files that may not be suitable to caching at the child tier layer. If it stores the information, great, it can be proxied back to the user. Otherwise, it's going to head to the origin server for the information. And both these tiers implement load balancing mechanisms to evenly distribute incoming requests amongst servers within their respective tiers. So from implementing this two-tier caching strategy, we have significantly improved the latency of requests, even with long tail content, by ensuring that even content with lower demand is stored closer to the end user. This is also very much scalable and flexible. So as traffic increases, more servers can be added to both the child tier and the parent tier allowing us to efficiently handle growing demand and reduce the amount of requests that forwarded to the origin server. So now we understand a number of caching strategies, how do we ensure the client effectively finds the nearest edge server? Well, this is where the DNS resolution comes in. So we're gonna be using the domain name system as part of the internet service provider. Now we've already covered DNS in detail within the client server model lesson here on AlgoJS. So I'm not going to go into full detail, but the purpose of the DNS is to resolve the domain name or content requested to an IP address or designated edge server. Under the hood, the authoritative DNS server analyzes the geographical information presented to it from the client. So information from its IP address. And based on this information, the server can intelligently choose the edge server that is geographically close Closest, but there are some flaws with this implementation. This only provides a straightforward mapping of domain names to IP addresses without considering dynamic factors such as real-time server load and that clients commonly cache DNS results client-side. So if the edge node gets a new IP address, the client may still send requests to the old IP that is no longer in use. So in a scenario like this, we could consider using Anycast, which is a network routing scheme where multiple servers in different geographical locations share the same IP address and the infrastructure directs incoming requests to the nearest optimal server based on metrics such as network proxy or lowest latency. So how does it work? Well, the user first sends a DNS query to the DNS resolver to resolve the domain name into an IP address. Then multiple servers across different locations share the same Anycast IP address and these servers form an Anycast cluster or group and each server within this is known as an Anycast node. Now the IP address returned from the DNS is the IP address of this Anycast cluster. Then when the request comes into the Anycast cluster, we're going to be using border gateway protocol here. And here the BGP routers are going to make routing decisions based on factors like network proximity or lowest routing cost to select the Anycast node that is best suited for the user request, optimizing the network topology here. So this setup helps minimize the distance data needs to travel by intelligently directing to the nearest Anycast node with the lowest routing cost. It provides redundancy and failover capabilities. So for example, if one of these servers becomes unavailable or experiences issues, the BGP routing infrastructure automatically reroutes requests to the next nearest available Anycast node. And it also simplifies the DNS resolution process by allowing multiple servers to share the same IP address. So now that we have a good understanding of which edge servers to choose, how do CDN services strategically place edge servers across the globe to optimize network topology? So let's first take a step back and look at the internet as a whole. This is made up of internet service providers. So as you can see here, we have major internet service providers and we have smaller service providers that provide users with access to the internet. So examples of this kind of BT, Vodafone, you've also got AT&T. Whereas IXPs or internet exchange points are physical points where different internet service providers connect their networks to exchange internet traffic. In London, we have London Internet Exchange and this at a high level is how internet traffic works. So based on this information, there are two prime locations where we can locate our edge service to optimize the network topology. These locations are near internet exchange points and inside major ISP networks. Now, why is this? Well, by placing edge servers near internet exchange points allows direct peering with multiple internet service providers. So there is no need for any intermediaries or third-party transit providers, allowing for a more efficient and faster data transfer. And like we said, the second location is integrating within major internet service provider infrastructures. So by physically citing servers within the data center or points of presence controlled by the internet service providers, we can majorly impact and enhance the connectivity between our CDN and the internet service providers user base because what we're essentially doing is adding our servers physically closer to the end users within each of the main internet service provider networks. So that's exactly what we're going to do for our design. Now we can't store every single bit of information within our edge servers. 
So we need some cash invalidation strategies. So the first most naive approach would be to use something we're very familiar with by now, and that is Poland. So the edge server periodically queries the origin server to determine if updates or changes have occurred in the content. So it's going to poll for that information. So it's going to open up a connection. And then when the origin server has new information, it's going to send that back to the edge server, upon which point another long polling request is going to be made. And it ensures that the cache content remains up to date with the latest changes from the origin server. However, this approach introduces latency due to its reliance on periodic checks of the origin server, potentially resulting in stale data being held within the edge servers. Furthermore, in the case of dynamic content, frequent polling can lead to increased resource consumption on both the edge server and origin server, thereby reducing its scalability. So if you think we've got millions of clients, millions of clients are connected to multiple edge servers and each of these edge servers is constantly polling for information from the origin server as the CDN gets bigger, this is not going to be feasible. So we need to look for a better solution. And one that is both effective and simple is implementing a time to live on the edge servers where each cached object within the edge server is assigned a time to live duration, indicating how long it can be considered valid before requiring an update. So say we had a time to live of 3,600 seconds. So an hour. When a user requests information from the edge server, say it's still within the TTL. So it returns that content back. However, if a user makes a request and the time to live has expired, the edge server is going to proxy that request to the origin server for the updates, which is going to propagate back through the edge server to the user. Now this could introduce some extra latency. So a slight optimization we could employ here is if data consistency is not a priority, when a user initially makes a request and the time to live is out of date, the edge server sends back stale data and asynchronously fetches from the origin server the fresh data and it then stores it within the edge cache that way any subsequent request made to the edge server will be served fresh data with an updated time to live and lastly we can further improve this time to live by utilizing what's called entity tags or e tags so how e tags work is when content is initially fetched from the origin server an e tag is provided with it so this e tag is fetched by the edge server from the origin server and this is used as a reference for a specific version of the content cached on the edge server. So the edge server may make requests to the origin server. Now say the origin server does have the e tag of ABC123. The edge server is going to pass a request up to the origin server with an e tag specified within the if none match header. Now, if they're the same, there is no updates. So it can return back a 304, indicating that no content has been updated, so not modified. However, if the origin server receives an update, the e tag within the origin server is changed to DEF456. Now we have a discrepancy between e tags. So when the edge server makes a request passing in, the e tag within the non match header, the origin server is going to see that the e tags don't match. So it's going to pass back the full payload to the edge server and update the e tag. And this provides us with a much more granular approach to cache validation. So while the time to live sets a global expiration time for an entire resource, e tags further optimize by allowing servers to validate individual versions of resources. So by combining time to live and e tags, servers can gain more precise control over cache content. And this enables them to avoid unnecessary refreshing when only specific parts of a resource are updated, optimizing resource utilization and ensuring clients receive the most up-to-date content when needed. And here is our final design. So the chosen hybrid approach combines the strengths of both push and pull CDN strategies, fostering flexibility and efficiency in content delivery. The approach is enabled through this multi-tier architecture comprising of a parent and a child tier. The parent tier situated closer to the origin serves as an intermediary between the origin server and the child nodes for caching and coordinating content updates. Now in contrast, the child tier consists of edge servers closer to the end users, directly interacting with the clients, striking a balance between proactive caching and dynamic content delivery. Now, an integral part of this design is in the incorporation of any cache routing mechanism directing clients requests to an any cache cluster with a single IP address utilizing the gateway protocol. Now this not only reduces latency by selecting the geographically closest server, but it also enhances reliability through improved failover capabilities. Furthermore, the strategic placement of the servers near internet exchange points or within major internet service providers optimizes the CDN's network topology, reducing transit costs. Now to facilitate data removal and updates, the CDN leverages TTL and E tags. These enable more granular control over cache invalidation, allowing for efficient validation and content updates where the e-tags are originally generated by the origin server stored along with the content within the edge servers and are included by clients in requests for conditional updates. The result is an agile and responsive CDN architecture, ensuring timely content updates while minimizing unnecessary data transfer and covers all of our requirements for this design.
for further discussions and what you could go away with and look at. Security is definitely something that needs to be considered. So how does the system defend against DDoS attacks, for example? So distributed denial of service attacks. What about purge mechanisms? So consider a scenario where urgent content updates need to be propagated across the CDN. So how would we clear an entire cache? Request prioritization. So address how the CDN prioritizes and handles different types of requests. So maybe there are certain scenarios where prioritizing certain content might be crucial for optimal user experience. So we discussed placing edge servers within internet exchange points and major internet service providers, but there are tools out there that can achieve this. And one such tool is proxy teller. So for anyone interested in further reading, definitely give this a look. Other than that, that concludes this design. Hope you found it useful and I'll catch you in the next one.